we just talked about this. Now I'm going to you guys go at the end, so I'll remember that. So as we enter into our last Green Sunday here, this season after Pentecost, before we start our transition into the full-fledged holiday season, I invite you to rise as you are able as we begin our worship. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, in whose image we are made, who claims us and calls us beloved. Amen. Holy One, we confess that we are not awake for you. We are not faithful in using your gifts. We forget the least of our siblings. We do not see your beautiful image in one another. We are infected by sin that divides your beloved community. Open our hearts to your coming. Open our eyes to see you in our neighbor. Open our hands to serve your creation. Amen. Beloved, we are God's children, and Jesus, our beloved, opens the door to us. Through Jesus, you are forgiven. By Jesus, you are welcome. In Jesus, you are called to rejoice. Let us live in the promises prepared for us from the foundation of the world. Amen.
and also with you. Let us pray. Righteous God, our merciful Master, you own the earth and all its peoples, and you give us all that we have. Inspire us to serve you with justice and wisdom, and prepare us for the joy of the day of your coming. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated. The first reading today is from the prophet Zephaniah, chapter 1. Be silent before the Lord God, for the day of the Lord is at hand. The Lord has prepared a sacrifice. He has consecrated his guests. At that time, I will search Jerusalem with lamps, and I will punish the people who rest complacently on their graves. Those who say in their hearts, the Lord will not do good, nor will he do harm. Their wealth shall be plundered and their houses laid waste. Though they build houses, they shall not inhabit them. Though they plant vineyards, they shall not drink wine from them. The great day of the Lord is near, near and hastening fast. The sound of the day of the Lord is bitter. The warrior cries aloud there. The day will be a day of wrath, a day of distress and anguish a day of ruin and devastation, a day of darkness and gloom, a day of clouds and thick darkness, a day of trumpet blast and battle cry against the fortified cities and against the lofty battlements. I will bring such distress upon people that they shall walk like the blind because they have sinned against the Lord. Their blood shall be poured out like dust, and their flesh like dung. Neither their silver nor their gold will be able to save them on the day of the Lord's wrath. In the fire of his passion, the whole earth shall be consumed. For a full, a terrible end, he will make of all the inhabitants of the earth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thessalonians. 
Now, concerning the times and the seasons, brothers and sisters, you do not need to have anything written to you, for you yourselves know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. When they say there is peace and security, then suddenly destruction will come upon them, as labor pains come upon a pregnant woman, and there will be no escape. But you, beloved, are not in darkness, for that for that day to surprise you like a thief. For you are all children of light and children of the day. We are not of the night or of the darkness. So then, let us not fall asleep as others do, but let us keep awake and be sober. For those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who are drunk, get drunk at night. But since we belong to the day, let us be sober and put on the breastplate of faith and love, and for a helmet, the hope of salvation. For God has destined us, destined us not for wrath, but for obtaining salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, so that whether we are awake or asleep, we may live with him. Therefore, encourage one another and build up each other, as indeed you are doing. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. my money with the bankers, and on my return I would have received 
what was my own with interest. So take the tap so take the talent from him and give it to one with the ten talents. For to all those who have, more will be given, and they will have an abundance. But from those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. As for this worthless slave, throw him into the outer darkness, where there will be weeping and the gnashing of teeth. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Please pray with me. Lord, your word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. Help us to see your light as we hear your word today. Amen. So I'm going to go back today to a movie that I guarantee any of the youth in this room probably have not seen. But the rest of us probably have. Have you ever seen the movie Patch Adams? That's an old one in today's world, right? When I heard the gospel for today, there's one scene from that movie that came to mind. It's the scene where Patch is on trial for practicing medicine. He pushes back at the board about what it means to care for patients. He talks about a doctor's mission being not just to prevent death, but to improve quality of life. There's something beautiful that I see happen in this scene. And it is how Patch uses what valuable things he has been given. As he ends his speech to the board, it ends like this. I want to be a doctor with all my heart. I want to become a doctor so that I could serve others. And because of that, I have lost everything, but I have also gained everything. I've shared the lives of patients and staff members at the hospital. I've laughed with them and cried with them. This is what I want to do with my life. And as God as my witness, no matter what your decision today, I will still become the best doctor the world has ever seen. Patch was trusted with something. And he is bold in declaring that he will use it. And this is so relevant when we look to our gospel today. So when we look at our gospel, we could focus on the slave language that often catches people's ears and get caught there and miss the bigger picture. Just like the board is caught up on some of the ways Patch was being a doctor. I want us to not get stuck there. And I want to offer a different translation that's just as authentic for the word slave. Instead of the word slave, let us use the translation of servant. It changes the way our ears hear this gospel message. And it might help us in translating these words to our lives a little bit better. <clears throat> we hear about three different servants who do different things with the talents they are given. The first is given five talents, and when the owner returns, that servant has doubled the talents to ten. He's told, well done, good and faithful servant. When, then we have the second who is given two talents. <coughs> and when the owner has returned, he has made those talents to four. And he is also told, well done, good and faithful servant. Finally, there's the third one who's so worried about the one talent he has given that he buries it to keep it safe. 
when the owner returns, it does not go over so well. He says that at the very least, he should have invested that talent so it at least earned some interest. Now, yes, this story is talking about talents in the realm of money, but I believe it's talking about more than just money. We have a God who has blessed and entrusted each of us with talents. These are gifts that we have two options with. We have the options of tapping into those gifts that we have been given by God and using those talents and those gifts for the benefit of the community. Or we can keep them for ourselves. The choice is actually ours. But one thing is certain, we have been trusted with something from God that in my opinion is far more valuable than the talents that the servants in our gospel are entrusted with. Think about Patrick and Clip again. He was given gifts by God. He was entrusted with them. He could have kept them to himself, but instead, he puts himself on the line to be bold, to use the gifts for the benefit of others. He so much wants to be that servant using his gifts that he realizes that no matter what they decide as a board that day, he was going to be a doctor that used the gifts God gave him for the sake of others. He models what it means to be a good and faithful servant. Think about the parable that we heard in perspective to the gifts that God has blessed each of us with. They're not the same. Each of our gifts are unique. I'll tell you, my gift is not music. I'm beyond thankful for Kartika because you want to know what? If I was in charge over there, there would be no music in worship. But that's the beauty of what I mean, our gifts are, right? They're not all the same, but we have been entrusted by God to use them. God has blessed us each with a unique one. If we act as that third servant and hide out, hide those gifts inside of us, and keep them for ourselves, what is the benefit? How does it help the body of Christ? How does that play into the inbreaking of the kingdom of God here and now in our very midst? And how does that bring glory and thanksgiving to God? A God who has blessed us beyond our comprehension. You as a community here sit in a time of transition. And what better time than right now to search deeper into yourselves, to enliven those gifts God has given you. Maybe it's one that you have kept hidden because it's scary to use. And work at utilizing those gifts for the benefit of the community here. Just think about what might happen if everyone starts using their unique gifts for the benefit of others, for the sake of the kingdom that is present here and now. I believe that if we do this, it will not just be doubling of the talents like we hear of in our gospel, but that we will be blessed by God in ways beyond our comprehension with energy and joy and excitement greater than we can even imagine. We just might start by starting to recognize God in our midst in the new and exciting ways ahead. God present in the gifts that God has blessed us each with. We are God's children and have been blessed and entrusted with valuable talents that God is longing for us to use for the sake of the kingdom. My prayer is 
that we learn to use our own gifts. And also, lift up others who have complementary gifts so that we become the best servants of God in our world, our community, and in our lives. Amen.
breath and life as we pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Gracious God, you give talents and gifts to all your people, and you equip the church to serve. Turn us from fear and self-serving ways that we use our talents to glorify you and encourage our neighbors. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. And you have been our dwelling place from one generation to another. Sustain the life of the planet. Protect farmlands and harvests. Direct all people in wise stewardship of all the Earth's resources. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. You call us to honesty and integrity. Instill these values in the hearts of all nations and their leaders. Free any who are oppressed. Expose all corruption and bring redemption to victims of injustice. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. You teach us to count our days that we may gain a wise heart. Where there is sickness or sorrow, bring healing. And where there is loneliness, reveal your love in community. We remember before you today, John, Jeannie, Jack, Stacy, Kent, Amber, Chris, Claire, Siri, Sean, Lori, Diane, Greg, Daniel and Janet, Wendy, all those who hunt today and throughout the winter, Jason, Sarah, Jim, Nikki, Joanne, and Kate. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We pray for the faith formation ministries of our church. Give to all children, youth, and adults who study your word the breastplate of faith and love. Shape us by your love and show us how to encourage one another. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Gracious God, you are faithful in all generations. For the promise of life and rest and for the witness of those who have died in the faith, we praise your goodness. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We have, we have offered our spoken prayers and those that we continue to hold in our hearts, trusting in your mercy. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen.
generations have turned to you, gathered around your table, and shared your abundant blessings. Number us among them as we gather these gifts from your abundance and give thanks for your rich blessings. We may feast upon your very self and care for all that you have done. Through Jesus Christ, our sovereign and servant. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. But deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. This is the Lord's table, and the Lord's invitation to each and every one of us to come, taste and see that the Lord is most certainly good. Come, for all is now ready.
that now and take the bread. This is the body of Christ given for you. And the wine. The bread of, the blood of Christ shed for you. And I invite you to rise as you are able. May this, the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. And let us pray. Blessed be your name, O God, for we have feasted on your word, Christ Jesus, the joy and delight of our hearts. Strengthened by this food, send us to gather the world to your banquet where none are left out and all are satisfied. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And receive now the blessing. May the God of all creation, in whose image we are made, who claims us and calls us beloved, who strengthens us for service, Give you reason to rejoice and be glad. The blessing of God, sovereign, Savior, and Spirit, be with you today and always. Amen. Amen.
you as well. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Um, and yes, uh, thank you this morning um, for that wonderful <coughs> message. And um, I just really want to um, emphasize that we certainly have been blessed and entrusted with gifts and talents. And I really want to encourage us to use them to both praise God and really uplift others around us. Amen. Um, a couple of things. Um, Thanksgiving Eve services will not be held here this year. Um, they will be held at First English um, at 7 o'clock. But our own Shelly will be helping to serve pie. We need pie. Um, so there will still be the, the pie social, it just won't be here. Um, so I encourage you. Yes, Shelly? Can I just ask that if anyone can't come to the pie social, if they'd like to donate a pie, that, that I will come in here and pick them up if you have them here by 4 o'clock. Okay, so, so if you didn't hear that, she will take the pie from here if you want to bring pie. Um, and have them here by 4 o'clock. 4 o'clock. Okay. So, we will still have pie social. Uh, it just won't be within our own building, um, but it will be at First English, so I encourage you um, to do that. Um, Midweek Advent service, what? Is there a wait? Oh, no, okay. Um, Midweek Advent services will be happening here at Good Shepherd. They will start at 5.30. Um, uh, November 29th will be the first one. Yours truly will be giving the first mes message, so um, don't let that deter you. <laughs> um, I will keep it short and sweet. Well, as sweet as I can keep that. But, um, yes, I know. Um, so I encourage you for that. Um, our confirmation students um, from Good Shepherd, St. Stephen's, and Emmanuel will be part of the services again. So um, another opportunity to experience our shared ministries. Um, going on through the Wasa area, so I encourage you to um, be parts of that. Um, I would like to shout out a thank you to the Finance Committee. Uh, they um, were able to give a proposed budget to the Council this last week, and we did approve it. Um, and we will be um, giving that to the congregation at our annual meeting in January. So thank you to them for their hard work. Um, annual meeting will be in January, so we still need four council members. So I encourage you, if you are willing to give it a try, it's a good experience for anyone who has never done it. Um, it gives you a different opportunity and a different visual to what's happening at your congregation and throughout the Wasa area, especially right now with everything, the transitions going on. Um, just gives you a different viewpoint, and I encourage anyone that's ever wondered or hasn't done it, or maybe did it a long time ago, now is a great opportunity. Or if you know someone um, that you think might enjoy it or be interested, um, that this is the time. Um, so talk to anybody in the council, or uh, Josh, um, who was on the council, is also helping us um, to find members. So if you don't know who your council members are, raise your hands if you're here. Um, or talk to the staff, okay? Um, keep an eye on the holiday schedules. Uh, lots of different things going on at different places. Um, so just keep an eye out for those in your bulletin. Um, and then town hall meeting uh, today. Um, I encourage any of you, I know there's a lot of regular attendees, but I encourage any of you that haven't attended them, um, today might be a good day to stay. Um, we had a meeting yesterday with Bishop Ann and Pastor Asher and Pastor Dara from the Synod Leadership. Um, some great discussions with um, six congregations from the Wasa area. Um, it was a wonderful meeting, lots of energy, lots of positivity, and I have some um, significant updates for all of you. Um, so I encourage you to stay so that I can give you those updates. Um, so go out, grab some coffee, uh, grab a snack, and we will reconvene in here at 10.15. And um, I encourage you between now and then to keep your hearts and your minds open. Um, and 
be ready to do some prayerful discernment about the future. So, peace to you, and I'll see you in a little while. Thank you.